thought America's team was going to be better this year. Right. They're going to be better because it's all the quarterback. Dak Prescott, instead of spending I his offseason rehabbing, he's been doing developmental stuff. He's been there Ooh. and available, working with his team. Go. Got C.D. Lamb on the outside. Yeah. Zeke Elliott, I've been hearing good reports about Tony Pollard maybe playing in the slot a little bit, catching passes to complement their duo. I just like what the Cowboys are doing. I think this team is better positioned this year to win it than they were last year. I think that's a scary thought based on what we saw during the regular season. Mm. Slick was mad at that from the beginning. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, no, Bucky. no, 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 no. Uh -huh. no. Not mad. Not mad. Not mad. Not mad? Not mad. But go ahead. Oh, go yeah, ahead. I will. I will go get ahead. it in. I'm going to tell you right now, Bucky up here campaigning for these Cowboys. Uh, I'm in support of the Cowboys, but not as much as Bucky Brooks. He wants to make America's team great again. I hear you. But at the same time, we're looking at the Dallas Cowboys, who will be better next year. Y'all got to really distill this question to what it really is asking, which is basically, can the Dallas Cowboys win a playoff game? Because last year they win 12 games. That's a great record in the NFL, 12 and 5. But then they lose their playoff game. So the real question is, can they win a playoff game? Not a single person alive is going to sit there and swear that the Dallas Cowboys, with all of this talent, with Dak Prescott, at quarterback, can't win a playoff game. As a matter of fact, in the playoff game they lost, which they were getting spanked, they were one play away in a questionable call from actually winning that playoff game. So I look at the Dallas Cowboys, number one offense, in the NFL. And you talk about all the talent that they have on that side of the ball. And I think they got rid of some dead weight, not only mentally, but physically. Physically. No more disguising as a number one receiver, Amari Cooper. You got to go, bro. Make room for CeeDee Lamb and his blossoming and his growth. Also, whatever happened last year, I think the Dallas Cowboys staff went back into their meeting rooms and said, look, we saw Ezekiel Elliott supposedly fully motivated last year. Or we're going to see him fully motivated this year because Tony Pollard is not playing games. So in terms of the touches, in terms of the support that Dak Prescott's going to have, it's going to be even greater. And most importantly, Dak Prescott gets to focus on not only his entire body, but his entire game versus last offseason. All he could do is focus in on his one leg in rehab. All of that adds up to a better season. All that adds up to a playoff win for these Dallas Cowboys. Uh, Marcellus, did you start out by saying that you didn't support the Cowboys as strongly as Bucky Brooks? Not as strongly did. as Bucky Brooks. Bucky Brooks did, got to win a Super Bowl. Did you actually start out that way? Because <laughs> what I heard was a campaign that was much stronger than what Bucky had coming out of the gate. I'm a, I'm a good and seller. Bucky came out strong. <laughs> you guys are forcing me to start this. Look, I don't know that you guys ever had a training plan where you did either gassers mm -hmm, or yeah. one on twos as mm -hmm. the first thing out of the gate for practice. But that's what you're putting on me for this show. <laughs> we couldn't have put the Cowboys back in the B or the C block just so I could get warmed up a little bit. I got to go one on two with this right away. Because yeah, look, yes. here's the bottom line. You're never going to go wrong by expecting the Cowboys to disappoint whatever mm. expectations mm. you have. Mm. That has been proven over the years. And in spite of the fact that they have one of the easiest schedules in the NFL this year, the odds makers have them winning fewer games than they did last year. The over-under is at 10. They won 12 last year. And looking at their schedule, they should be, I'm, I'm counting, even if they lose to all of the quality teams, the way that is structured, the time off that they have, how easy it is on the back end, if they can't get to 12 wins, there's something seriously, seriously wrong with these Cowboys. Now, they didn't have a great offseason, and I will say there are parts, Micah Parsons being at the front of the line, C.D. Lamb being another, where I am hoping and expecting that these guys are going to take another step forward. But I can't ignore the pieces that they've lost. Amari Cooper is dead weight? You yeah. want to have that conversation with Dak Prescott? Because um, hmm? dead weight and a crutch are not the same thing. And I would say it's <laughs> rather the <laughs> latter than the former when it comes to oh, Dak Prescott. Yeah, so yeah. I need to see Dak Prescott be at his best without Amari Cooper by his side. But in any case, this idea that they're going to be better when 
they lost the pieces that they lost. I, I assume you're counting on the schedule to make them better because as a team, I can't possibly make that argument. Hmm. I see, see, Rick, I, I don't think Rick, Rick must not spend a lot of time in the garden. He doesn't have a green thumb like I do. Brooks <laughs> landscaping over here. We like to get in the yard and kind of make, sometimes you got to prune the trees. Sometimes you got to do some things mm. to make sure you let that new growth come. So some of this is mm. due to addition by subtraction. Mm. What do I mean by that? You had to let Amari Cooper go so C.D. Lamb can fully blossom. Preach. You had to get those guys off the offensive line. Connor Williams, Leo Collins, so this offensive line can be better because as much as we talk about Dak Prescott being able to throw it to the perimeter, he can't throw it if he's on his back. And in the last couple of years, we've seen too many leaks up front, not enough physicality and toughness at the line of scrimmage, can't run the ball the way that you want to run the ball or the way you need to run the ball for the Dallas Cowboys. So now you fortify that offensive line. You get those young, hungry guys on the perimeter playing in what we call expanded roles. Yeah, I think the Dallas Cowboys are more than ready to go to the next step. But let's really talk about the strength of their team. Defensively, another year in Dan Quinn's system, mm. Trayvon Diggs being able to settle in. We saw what he did last year. Look, he was a bit of a double agent. He had a lot of interceptions, but he gave up big plays. Now you understand what is being asked. He's a premier corner. Now he takes better care of a hey, not allowing the ball to fly over his head. I just think this team is better because the pieces are better because they've been able to blossom. I look for the Cowboys to do big things. Now, my man Marcellus is going kind of yeah. Play it conservative and hedge yeah. their bet. Yeah. Look, this team is going. going. This is the year. Oh, yeah. They're going. They're, they're going. going right their ticket. They're going. I look at the NFC. It's wide open for the Cowboys yeah. to go to the Super Bowl. This is the time. Yeah. Run to the cashier's thing. Place your bets. See, the Cowboys are going. I'm glad you finally clarified that for Slick Rick, who was out here looking at me like I was coming in hotter than Bucky Books. Bucky has them in the Super Bowl. This team has Super Bowl potential, but I'm not going that far just yet. Baby steps. First step being, let's win a playoff game. Let's start right there. Now, yeah, Slick. Yeah, that's Slick, a good start. I can tell you can't, you don't even believe what you're saying out there because you try to use the premise of what the odds makers are saying about the Dallas Cowboys. Oh, the same odds makers that predicted the Rams versus the Bengals? Oh, they didn't predict that. Oh, the same odds makers who tell me that the Warriors weren't going to be good? Like, oh, oh, they didn't predict that. Man, don't give me the odds makers. Give me some real facts like this. Uh, were the Dallas Cowboys 6-0 in the NFC East last year? Mm. Yes. Yeah. And I know teams have improved on paper, on sliced-up dead trees, but at the same time, you want to know what the point differential was last year with the Dallas Cowboys in their division? 40-17. to 40 to 17. Go ahead and improve. Make it 40 to 30. We still blowing y'all out. So the Dallas Cowboys have a quarterback since 2017, 22 and three in his division. Slick. So that means they're going to be in the playoffs. All I'm saying is they're going to take the next step, which is get over that hump and not be one and done in the playoffs. Win your division, get into the dance, win that game, and let's see, see if this snowballs to where Bucky's going. But where you at, Slick, right now, you in Vegas losing your money, believing these odds makers. Don't inflate what I said about the odds makers as my entire take or the reason that I have mm -hmm. questions about the Dallas Cowboys. Mm -hmm. I am simply saying that looking at their schedule, they have an infinitely easier schedule than they did last year, and yet the odds makers are putting their win total lower. Hmm, that raises a question. <laughs> and then you're telling me the commanders and the Eagles, and I assume you were talking about those two teams, mm. are better on paper and the Dallas Cowboys are worse on paper, and yet we're going to say, but forget all that. The Dallas Cowboys are going to be better based on what at this point in the season or in the calendar year because we can only go by what we have on paper. We're not into training camp. We're not into the first game of the season. We're not into anything other than what they look like on paper. So you're telling me they're going to be even more formidable in the division in spite of the fact that two of the three teams without question are better on paper and the Cowboys are worse on paper and they have a better, uh, they have an easier schedule and yet the odds makers expect them to win fewer games. So 
Just help me. I mean, oh, look, I I'm happy you. to get another, a pair of star-shaped glasses like you guys have. <laughs> I'm happy that if you guys send them, I'll try them on. But you need to give me a reason. And so far, all I've heard about, like, pruning the garden, like, if we're gonna, yeah, you can weed, and that allows other stuff oh, to man. grow, but it also allows, like, other weeds to come in and grow. That's not a guarantee in itself. Oh, that what weed you talk. planted oh, is suddenly man. gonna become award-winning in your garden. So just help me. Give me, I, I have yet to hear one reason oh, really? other than the oh, that absence weed is gonna allow growth. <laughs> Give All me right. one reason All why right. I should I'm, believe in these I'm, cowboys I'm, 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 like I'm I did last year. I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna make it very simple for you. Like we talk about the National Football League being a quarterback-driven league. Ooh. And so first let's talk about the division. The division in which we see Daniel Jones, Carson Wentz, and Jalen Hurts <laughs> play against Dak Prescott. So Dak Prescott, Oops. right there, just by showing Oops. up, Dak Prescott gives them a chance to win a division because he dominates the division. He's the best quarterback. That was quarterback. the same as last year. He's a quarterback in the division, and they won a division. Like, they, and, I that's mean, what they did. They won a the division, so they, division. So they do right. it. So and now, did they win a let's playoff look at the entire mm -hmm. NFC, and we look at the quarterback landscape. We have Tom Brady. We have Aaron Rodgers. We have Matthew Stafford. Dak Prescott is somewhere in that conversation as a top three quarterback in the conference. Oh. There's no one else in the conference. Oh. So before we can, oh. we got to win a division, then we got to win the conference. So if we mm. talk about Dak Prescott being in the conversation as one of the top quarterbacks in the conference, we're there. We're already on the precipice of being able to get into the deal. Now, if you're saying the Cowboys are playing in the AFC, yeah, then I would talk about that monstrous slate of quarterbacks. But right now, Dak Prescott looks good, and I can't see other guys emerging in their uh. prime saying they're going to challenge Dak Prescott. Yeah, give me number four. I'm all the way in on the Dallas Cowboys in the yeah. NFC. I don't understand why we're still having this conversation. Say it, baby. Like Snoop said it. One, two, three, and to the four. Give me some Dak Prescott. Let's go out there and win some more. That's what's going to happen, Slick. Slick told me, and I'm going to use you against you, Slick. Good luck fighting yourself. That last year, they had a tougher schedule, right? Okay, mm -hmm. I get you that, obviously. And they went 10 and 2 in the conference, including 6 and 0 in their division. Mm. And 10 and 2 was the best of all NFC teams in the conference. So wait a minute. Against a tougher schedule, the Dallas Cowboys went 10 and 2. But now you try to flip it and say, well, this year their schedule's easier. Here's the flaw in saying that. Those who say the schedule is easier are basing it off of last year's teams. But as we know in the NFL, every single year, you predict the team to be great, and it's not as great. You predict the team to be bad, and they're better than you predicted. Case in point, Cincinnati Bengals, they had won two games and four games. All of a sudden, they're in the Super Bowl. A lot better than we expected. Tampa Bay runs it back after winning the Super Bowl with all 22 starters. Not exactly the same. Yep. Slick, I don't know what weed is coming from the grounds that Bucky has grounded for you in horticulture, but it sounds <laughs> like it doesn't hit that Bay Area because you're on a sniff with it. Come on, Slick. Make some sense of this. Oh, Bucky, let me get to you first. Okay. You know what I heard all last year? I heard that if Dak Prescott can just stay healthy, yeah. the Dallas Cowboys are a Super Bowl contender. I believe, Bucky, you and I had a conversation on this very show about that very thing. Did we not? I, I, I'm, I pretty sure, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Hearing I'm pretty sure. that. But right? I was like, I'm future focused. So, I'm future focused. <laughs> Dak, Dak Prescott was healthy last year, right? Future focused. He I'm was future healthy focused. last year. He two, was? Two years to get back from that injury. He was healthy last two year, years. and what it happened? Takes a, it takes a couple years to come back from that injury. They didn't win. They didn't win. His ankle was all turned. It was all weird. Yeah. Come on. You saw that ankle. <laughs> Your body don't go that way. Yeah, it takes right. a while to get comfortable this, with that. See, you know what? This is it. This what is, is Marcellus's logic. You know what? It, everything is opposite land. With the Dallas Cowboys. Oh, the Dallas Cowboys have always disappointed. The Dallas Cowboys have gotten worse, but you know what? The Bengals, nobody expected them to be better, and, oh. and yet they went to the Super Bowl. Like, we're, we're doing the reverse logic thing. Like, mm -hmm. logic says that this is what's going to happen, and, but you know what? We've seen some evidence here now and then of logic being turned on its head. So this is where I will agree with both. Oh, there we go. I think we finally found we some are the common world. ground. Yes, yeah. yes, we are the it world. It would be completely against logic for the Dallas Cowboys to be better this year. I agree with you a thousand percent <laughs> on that. It would make 
abs it would make absolutely no sense that the Dallas Cowboys would be better this year than they were last year because of the losses. Look, they had a good draft. Free agency didn't really add anything significant. The free agent losses were much more significant. And I loved, Bucky, that you're mentioning, like, the offensive line needs to improve. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they lost pieces. Like, mm -hmm. okay, so who, who, who am I guaranteed is going to make their offensive line better? Oh. Who has demonstrated oh, yeah. that they're oh, capable they, they, of they making that offensive line? Am I missing? They drafted did, somebody. Did they it's called Blossom. Yeah, they it's called Blossom. Oh, they drafted somebody. They drafted Smith from Tulsa oh, to come in. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Be a we got, we got young blood. Okay. We got upgrade. fresh legs upgrade. in there now. We're not getting guys and, with hip and drug issues. and all. That's yeah, off the roster upgrade. now. Uh, yeah, we okay. moved on from that. Okay. We're talking about a new healthy mindset because yeah. a new offensive line healthy, physically healthy, mentally healthy as well. Dak Prescott has never had a losing season when healthy. So if Dak Prescott stays healthy, at least, at minimum, logical, illogical, like Acho's book, whatever you want to think, they are going to be a winning team. Now, you look into what they did last year against a tougher slay of opponents, according to you, Slick, and they went 10-2 in conference, and they went 6-0 in that division. No matter how much these teams try to close the gap, there is still a gap with a quarterback that is third in NFL and passer rating, fourth in completion percentage, and fourth in passing touchdowns with the number one offense. Good luck trying to keep up with these Cowboys. Trust me, they're going to get over that hump this year.